Hi there, my name is Eric and welcome to this tutorial. This is going to be an iron face effect that's requested by someone on YouTube and let's just look at what we're going to be doing. If you look closer you can see the yellow brightest areas. The veins are conforming with the movement of the hands. So let's get into business, start doing something. So on the timeline basically I've got my edit uh, here it's not an edit it's a short okay and it's a very stupid shot because it's way too bright and there was a lamp at the left side of the scene when I was filming and I didn't even notice that the shot was bright select the clip and click on the fusion button so we're gonna work on the image first as we're not gonna be able to achieve what we want so of using the shortcut I'm going to use the right click menu. So first of all, let's just go to add tools and I'm going to go to color and under color I'm going to go for color corrector, pipe it in here. I'm going to go into the menu and change it to levels. Uh, we want to touch on the levels and in the levels where we're going to leave the channel at RGB and what it is is that these are the dark areas, the mid-tones and the highlights. So we're going to play around with the mid-tones a little bit. Move it all the way to the right, you're taking more brightness out all the way to the left you added more brightness to it we're gonna shift it a little bit to the right not too much and then we're gonna use the overall output level and we're gonna shut the brighter areas down so you can see it gives it an even look like a night scene more like a night scene so bring it down a little bit and that should be fine now we're gonna dive into the individual channels so we take the red channel for instance and then the more on your right you're taking it out so we take a little bit of red out of this scene so we get this greenish look yep and then we're gonna dive into the green channel and we're gonna add more green to it so we go more onto the left a little bit onto the left and then we're gonna go into the blue and we want to add more blue to it so we're gonna go on the left as well so this is the look that we're looking for and that should be fine now we're gonna chain the menu back to colors and then we're gonna turn down the saturation a little bit we don't want too many colors in the scene the next thing we're gonna do is to create a vignette effect to uh, darken the edges a little bit uh, we're going to go to add tools again and we're going to use a uh, brightness and contrast and we're going to pipe it down here we're going to turn down the gain all the way to zero it will make the whole image darker now we can create an ellipse mask for the brightness and contrast but now it's doing it the wrong way we actually need the middle of the circle to contain the image and the outer side be black so we can click on invert on the ellipse mask to invert the distortion and now we're going we're gonna to bump up the soft edge uh, to grade it down a little bit and we can just type in here 0 0.3 and then begin to bring it down a little bit and now we can hold any uh, anywhere around the circle or the ellipse to enlarge it to get this smooth uh, blending and we can also touch on the um, soft edge to get this is going to look, and I'll just bring it back a little bit, I mean, this is cool. Uh, so this is kind of the vignette we're looking for. Great. With the vein, uh, I got this image on Google. It's, uh, if you Google it, I uh, just want to bring it from the bin. You can get it. If you Google veins and nothing comes up, uh, I'm sorry, you have to create your own veins. So if nothing comes up, but surely something's going to pop up on Google because everything is there. So basically, this uh, the size of the image is quite small, and we're dealing with 1080p as our output here so what we're going to do is to put out a background new the reason why I'm using a background new because background has uh, the full dimension of the composition 1920 by 1080 so we're going to match this uh, on top of it and that way it gives us let's just view it for a second it gives us a 1080p size of the image so we can see the actual size of our vein it's just this small so in this way we can just easily enlarge it to our taste or whatever we want so now what we have to do is to create a fast noise so i'm going to do add to its generators and then we can get fast noise for merge our fast noise on top of the veins so let's see what we get let's go into the fast noise and then bump up the details so first of all push the contrast way to the top and choose discontinue and also uh we're gonna want to bump up the brightness a little bit so 
the idea here is if you take a closer look at the veins now you can see that the noise is now wiping off some portions of the veins so that's going to be our burning effect so if we turn um, at the sieve uh, rate on sorry and to animate the noise so we can see we can play it to see what i'm talking about you can see the noise is going over the veins to cover some portions and revealing them so we can turn uh i think it's too big so we can scale it to get more details you scale it down so you can get more areas burning up as you can see if you zoom in closely here you can see the veins are burning so this is more like what we're looking for for the noise that's what we're going to do for now all right so with this said and done uh we're going to put this image on top of our hand and that's how i fix it effects it doesn't look good but let's see what we can turn this into so first of all we just easily pipe this on top of this and yes of course it's going to cover up the whole image how stupid could that be so what we can do is to create a mask so we take it out and then we're gonna create a mask uh, that is going to be fed in here around this area so the mask we're going to create is just going to be a b spline so we'll click on the b spline it just puts a b spline here and then we begin to just click around here to select the area that we want to affect this isn't bad all right so we just create a mask for the area that we want now that we have the mask we can just continue to pipe it in blend it and now we can just uh, mask this one uh, here so essentially what we're getting is this so we can then feather the mask bump up the soft edge a little bit and also bring down the bottom whip to just bring it down a little bit now we can see that we're having some uh, some square here and that's because the veins image is too small so we're gonna have to go and select that one here and then scale it a little bit to cover up and we can also rotate it to get a better uh, reposition it to get a better vein so this is not bad uh, i think with this position it's okay make some space here we want to track this image we just want to track this image so we're going to right click and go to add tools and then we're going to go down to tracking and we want a planar tracker and we're going to pipe that one in here and do the tracking so now with the planar tracker you get this kind of tools to create so actually you can create again the mask the area the you want to actually track so this is the area i really want to track select it like that and what i'm gonna do i'm gonna track it from the end to the beginning because well, to be honest from the beginning we don't actually need any tracking on the beginning so we're gonna fade our effect on our effect on somewhere in the middle so i would like to track from the end to the beginning and whatever it gets to i can stop it whenever i want so you're gonna leave it at track and that's it and then we we, we really don't want to change anything here yes yeah, to perspective that's what we want that's okay i'll put a background do what you have to do you have to set a reference time before we can start uh tracking so i'll set my cursor to the end of my clip so set it to 1079 all right so i'm gonna select all of this and then make sure we shift it to in place because we did not create the mask at the right place so now we set our reference time so we're ready to track so here on the track and just wait for it to track and these dark areas are not really considered because it's dark so let's wait for it to track so that's it our track is done so what we have to do next is uh, click this button here that says create a planar transform is going to create a nude for you that contains the tracking information so you can put it anywhere to track anything so now this track is not really important we can just take it 
and put it somewhere down the line so now what we're gonna apply this tracker to is this mesh right here we can pipe in this to the tracking before we can put this on top of this image we have to mask this image we need to mask it before we add the tracking information to it so the way the way we can do it is to put a brightness and contrast like the way we created the um, the vignette we can use the same technique put a brightness and contrast before the the tracker and then we're gonna gain it down and this time i'm gonna include alpha so we can mask that one and we don't need to invert it we need to invert our mask our tracking is a bit offset so we can add a normal transform nude after the tra uh, after the tracker a normal transform to just offset it uh, to to place it back in place so we can just use this transform to reposition our effect wherever we want it to so now if we play it through you can see the <coughs> everything is conforming perfectly okay so now it's not looking interesting so let's just uh, use a blend mode here okay so we're gonna change it to color dodge and we have to add the color correction to the effect that we have here right after here we're gonna add to color corrector and then we're gonna change the colors we're gonna once again go to the levels uh, go to the levels and then in the red channel we're gonna add some red to it and in the, in the green channel we're gonna also add some green to it and uh, yep but before that we need to go back to the blend mode and then turn down the gain because right now it's too much so we just limit the gain a little bit and that should do and we can go back to the color corrector here to add more red we add more red to the scene we, we take out green uh, more green to the scene and we can also go into the blue and then we just take out blue and uh, we can keep playing around with the colors again uh, let's go in the red uh, as well and in the dark areas we're gonna we're gonna add more red uh, to the the brighter areas we're gonna add more red to it we're gonna go into the green and do the same thing to the green yeah just to get uh, this kind of look yeah wish look uh, let's just move into a better position and uh, let's go forward to see it properly yeah so this is more like what we're looking for uh, it's too bright too bright okay so we can add more red all right, and then we come to the blend mode here, and we just gain it down a little bit. The uh, you know, if you look at the hand, uh, the effect should be underneath. We need the bones. You know, the bones are hidden, and that's not making it look realistic. So, if we go in a little bit, we need to make some space here. Bring all this up. Make some space here, and let's just add some where can we add the bone we can add the bone at the brightness and contrast so that means with this mask in here we can add more mask to it so we can select this mask right here and then we can just create a B spline again and we can just start clicking here and adding up some bone to the whole thing and close it so this is actually gonna max that area and then we're gonna feather it a little bit all right so that's uh done. so we need one more bone i think uh the feathering is too much and we can just bring it down a little not that one uh this one we can bring the feathering down a little bit yep and let's just hold that one now and create another bone so we go about here there 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 and there so that should also do for us uh, we can just uh, and feather it a little bit 
this can do the trick all right so this creates the trick um, I think the second bone should go a bit this way and then the bottom bit should be tinier yeah that's it okay so that should do and we're getting there yes we're getting there so we can come back here and then the blend mode we still need to bring it down a little bit and the burning areas are essentially the fast noise so the more bright the contrast is the more it burns so we can tone it down a little bit yeah and then bring it back and start a little bit as well right now we need more red in the scene so we're gonna go to our color corrector and make sure we got more red in the scene so more red it's too much and then we take out a little bit of green yeah yeah take out a little bit of green and yes that should do and then we're gonna show it down a little bit okay so now we have our effect come into play yeah not bad so we basically get an idea of uh, I don't want to see this so I'm gonna just take it off uh, so to conserve memory let's just play and see what we have here so now we have to fade the effect on from somewhere about here when he starts to fold this hand we can fade it on here so I'm gonna stand here and where the effect matches on top of this we're gonna use the blend so I'm gonna set animate so at this point it's there and then we'll come down here and fade it down to zero so let's see what we get so as it starts to as it starts to make the fist we get the effects coming on yes to get more of the burning going on you can actually turn the seed of the fast noise up to get it burning faster if you want the burning of the veins thank you for watching and then i hope you like it let me know down below and then we do more pictures keep your comments coming and then keep your requests coming so the next thing i'm going to do is the motion graphics effects for 